Guys, sorry I've taken a few days off. This is Caribbean Wrestlers You Should Know in honor of Caribbean American Heritage Month. Today we're going to talk about my friend Miguel Perez Jr., Miguelito. And my friends, what a fucking talented wrestler this guy is. So I went down to the island to try to do some things after IWA Puerto Rico's uh, owner, Victor Quinones, died. And because of the way, well, fuck it, because of the way we act, gringos were not easily trusted down there, you know? And Miguel Perez is a very traditional Puerto Rican man, extremely proud of his island, extremely proud of his family, and extremely proud of pro wrestling. He would do nothing ever to hurt pro wrestling, especially being a second generation wrestler, and his father was just such an important part of pro wrestling. He was one of the first tag team champions, if not, I believe him and Rocco were the first tag champions for what is now WWE, which used to be WWF. Miguel is a worker that just can work with anybody and has worked with everybody. Eddie Guerrero, Owen Hart, Chris Benoit, I mean, you name it. Yes, he cut his teeth and learned to wrestle in Puerto Rico and check out this training, my friends. First, his father is credited, Miguel Perez Sr. That makes sense. Thomas Marine, El Maravilla, and Lou fucking Thez. That explains a lot. Now, Miguel broke in in 1984. He was 19 years old, and he has been all over the world. There's not enough out there about the Puerto Rican wrestlers or the legends of Puerto Rican of Puerto Rico that wrestled like Miguel Perez Sr. or Miguel Perez Jr. And let me just start by saying this is the type of person Miguel Perez Jr. is. When I got there, I just came at him straight up and said, You don't like gringos much, do you, my friend? He said, No, I don't. <laughs> you know, he didn't pull any punches. And then this became the joke or the inside joke with him or the ball busting, you know, when I was trying to earn my 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 Caribbean stars or my Caribbean stripes on my shoulder, you know, my Puerto Rican stripes, you know, to get his trust. And I would say, Okay, now do you like gringos? No, but I will put up with them. You know, you really had to earn it with Miguel. But I love that about him, you know. I could see right through the man and see that this is a guy that could have been wrestling as long as he wanted to in the United States and making big money. He loved this island and he loves to be with his family. Why not wrestle four times a week and sleep in your own effing bed every night? That was the dream, man. And not many people in the wrestling industry have been able to do that. One that comes to mind, the first one that comes to mind is Jerry the King Waller. Now, like I said before, Miguel has been to Mexico, he's been to Japan, he was there during so many pivotal moments in Japan with All Japan, New Japan, he wrestled with CMLL as a young man, he came in as a Puerto Rican heel down there where he actually took his life into his hands to learn the craft and come back to the island knowing the craft and drawing an amazing amount of money. So it took me quite a while to get Miguelito to trust me, you know? And when I was down there, I went ahead and asked Miguelito if I could work with them on a Saturday night. Yes, it was a Saturday night. And if I could use his license to promote a town. At first, the answer was no. But after I won him over, he let me run a town called Yabacoa. Now, I wasn't going down there saying, see how smart gringos are and see how dumb Puerto Ricans are. I was just saying, Randall work his ass off, watch what happens. This is the perfect place for someone like me to get things done. And it was. We ran that town of Yabacoa, and Carlos found out about it. He went ahead, and that the, the opposition then was the World Wrestling Council. They booked that same building Friday night, the night before my event on purpose to try to shoot me in the foot. I did such an amazing job of promoting it 
that they drew 47 people and I drew 1,800 after they had been there. And what was so cool about all this stuff is at the end of the day, Miguel, I asked him if he would work or if he would take the booking. He told me, no, amigo, no. You know, when I ran that town. Well, as it turns out, he told me, you worked your ass off. I worked that building for you that night for free. And he even got color for me for free. He would not accept payment, you know. Miguel Perez Miguelito is all heart. He is the definition of a good and decent person. His sense of humor is so dry, but it's so fucking there. The guy is just hilarious, you know. Here's another example. So Miguel has a reputation of being a little crazy. He has a hard time focusing. They used to, that was his gimmick down there, his focus, focus, you know, he would get distracted. And I guess it was kind of like ADD. OCD or ADD meets OCD, the Puerto Rican version. But he is kind of that way, and it's not like he's an asshole or anything like that, or he's legitimately crazy or a harm to anybody or himself. Because like I told you before, he is loved by so many people, and his friends and family love him even more, you know, which says so much about the character of a man. So him and Casey James, I trained Casey James when he was 18 years old. I sent him first down to the Mid-South, and he got to work three nights a week between Nashville and Memphis. When he came back from there, we immediately got him booked down in Puerto Rico, in IWA Puerto Rico. And what was funny about that was here he is only 20 years old, and he went down there to learn the craft and to hone the craft, as the whitest of whites, the gringoest of gringos, you know? And to his credit, man, he went down there like a man. He handled his business. He did what I taught him. And the type of guy that he is, they welcome him with open arms once he earned his right to perform there, you know? Matter of fact, Casey's been in a lot of top, you know, main event angles and semi-main event angles. At one point, he was their intercontinental champion as well as uh, their tag team champion. So he came down there teaming with Miguelito Perez and teaming with another great Puerto Rican star who's from Canada, Shane the Glamour Boy, or Glamour Boy Shane, and then he ended up turning, you know. So when he finally gets to work with Miguel, they were married for a while in a tag team scenario or tag team situation. And... Casey's in this match with Miguel. <laughs> and he tells Miguel, no, you fucked up the spot. And then he tags out. So Miguel takes off from the ring and just starts walking toward the ring entrance. And somebody ran over there and said, where are you going? He said, I'm going home. Fuck him. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so not going home in the match, Going home to his house, I don't need this shit. So somehow Casey cuts him off out there and grabs a headlock on him and pulls him back into the ring and says, I'm sorry, Miguel, don't go home. And they worked it out, man, and that only brought these motherfuckers closer at the end of the day. But I just thought that was one of the most entertaining stories in the world, and it really is even more entertaining if you know Miguel Perez. Once again, you go ahead and go down that rabbit hole on YouTube and you take a look at Miguel Perez's career. They got him listed at six foot one, two thirty nine. Bull fucking shit. Miguel Perez might have been that big in eighth grade. He goes two fifty all day. Bigger than that, uh, you know, as he got older. But as a wrestler, you have never seen a man so big move like he moved. See all these idiots today. I, they don't listen to the old timers, you know, and. They think through all that with their movements. Well, they're shrimps. Miguel Perez was built like a brick fucking shithouse, and he could do twice as much as those guys when he was probably still in his fucking 40s, man. You want to learn how to wrestle? You go ahead and you'll find Miguel Perez's stuff from when he was down in CML on YouTube. Some of it's down there, and he's worked with some of the greatest legends. And one that comes, the first one that comes to mind to me is some amazing stuff I saw when him and Shocker were kids, and when him and Silver King were kids down there, man. Talk about work rate and spots. Unbelievable. The stuff they did back then 
cannot be touched today. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and close this now and just remind you guys once again, Puerto Rican people are so proud, and I respect and I love it. They're proud of their heritage. They're proud of their island. And they have this amazing love for their families and care for their families. That is just, I've never met a Puerto Rican that was a narcissist or a sociopath, honest to God. And even though I had to pay my dues and work really hard, I did eventually get Miguel Perez to say it's on record that I am his favorite gringo. Okay, guys, for Miguel Perez's uh, favorite gringo, please check the description for Miguelito's Wikipedia link and ways to support Premier Pro Wrestling. Be cool. Please note, no YouTube commercials on these.